you know, there's this really common misconception about React that stated dates are asynchronous, which is just not true. And if you look at this little example right here, where we basically log a state before and after increasing it and try it out, where we basically see both values stay the same for each render, but they still increase between renders, we can easily see why people think that this is async, right? I increase the state, it doesn't immediately update, but afterwards it did. This is async, but it actually isn't. It's a concept of closures in JavaScript. And to understand why set state behaves this way, let's first of all take a look at what a closure actually is. So right here, we've got a really simple example of a closure, a function that returns another function, and the inner function can use some of the state, in this case, x of the outer function. So if we just try this out, simple closure, we can see the variable x is locked by the function bar, just like it's designed to do. And for a JavaScript developer, this looks totally normal, but many languages actually can't do this because in most languages, bar wouldn't be able to access the variable x. But what JavaScript does in the background is it creates a closure, which is basically a function that still has access to x, even though it's not really inside of its scope because the scope of x is lost as soon as foo is done executing. The variable x will need to stay in memory and be enclosured inside of the variable bar so that when bar is executed, the current value of x can be fetched so that in this case, the variable can be used to be locked. So basically a closure is a way to create a function that uses stuff from outside of its scope, even if the scope the variable was originally in doesn't exist anymore. And this is something viewState uses intensely. So let's now look at that. And of course, the best way to understand how use state works is by creating our use state ourselves. So we've got the use state fake right here. It has a global variable to save our current state. If the variable isn't set that, then it will be set to our initial value of the state, just like in a normal React use state where you can pass the initial value. And then we return the value and a function, in this case, to increase it, because I didn't want to bother with the whole set state logic. But to still see that the current value is updating, we are logging it before increasing it to basically see every single button press. And the implementation is actually quite simple as well. We are basically calling this with a value of one. We are not destructuring it right away. We are destructuring it inside of the on click. You'll see why that is shortly. Then we run the inc and lock state and we are console logging the value after increasing it. So basically just like this second console log count right here, we are console logging value after the increase. What we'll do is we override use state with our use state fake initial value again, which is basically simulating a re-render. So now let's first of all try this out and we can see it behaves exactly the same way as React. So we are at least close to simulating this problem. And now to really understand what's happening here, we basically stop simulating our re-render. So basically we're saying, okay, only the first time that this state updates, we want to update our state value right here. So we never re-render basically, it's like the use ref now. And if we now just reload and click our explanation again, we can see the variable inside of our use state fake still updates because that's this run right here. That's basically using a closure to still be updated every time. But this one, which is just passed by value. So whenever the use state fake is run, the current value is returned in here and not some kind of reference that will update because that's just not possible with primitive values. And what we're seeing is, yeah, the value of course can't update because this state never updates. And if we now just simulate the re-render again, which is basically what React does, then we can see everything behaves just like with React. So what do I actually mean with simulate re-render? Well, Every time that this little set count right here runs, React will know, okay, I've changed this state. So everyone that uses it will need to re-render. And re-render is basically just calling this function again, right? Because if you remember, if we just console.log any value in here, like one, for example, we can see the one runs in every render. So a render is basically just running this function right here. And yeah, this is basically why the count updates whenever a re-render happens but not whenever we try to console log it inside of a render. This value can only update if use state is run again. And every time that our function app, for example, right here runs, use state will be called again because yeah, it's directly calling use state. So no, none of this is asynchronous. It's just the fact that React 
passes a variable by value here and the set count is still able to use this previous logic right here, for example. So previous, previous plus one, because it's a closure. And this closure magic basically is what's happening for us to be able to update state without having to worry about is the current value up to date or whatever. This magic right here is only possible because of closures and that's why React state is not async. And if you now want to learn even more about React hooks and maybe also some of this generic stuff and everything TypeScript, then maybe check out this video where I'll show you how to use React with TypeScript for all of the most important hooks in the best possible way so that you know how to properly type your React apps the right way. Have a good day.